I'm Luke Summerhays, and I love Clefairy. Its adorable behaviour and appearance make it popular with men and women, young and old. Its numbers are few, however. Clefairy is the original cute little pink blob Pokemon. Alongside Jigglypuff and Chansey, Clefairy feels like it was created to make big, huggable plushes. And goddamn those Japanese geniuses. It works. Think of Kirby with cute brown ears and sharp fangs. As the name implies, Clefairy is a fairy. The other half of the name is Clef, from the French for a musical key. Clefairy's relationship with music is in the move Metronome, once its signature attack. The Japanese name is Pipi, an abbreviation of Clefable's name, Pixie. It has cute little wings on the back. According to the Pokedex in Gold version, the moonlight that it stores in the wings on its back apparently gives it the ability to float in mid-air. A strong relationship to the moon links them to the fair folk of many European legends. Another way the moon connection is often interpretive, in speculative Pokedex entries or even literally in the anime, is that Clefairy literally come from the moon. The thought of a race of fluffy pink creatures on the surface of the moon puts me in mind of the Clangers. Fun though the idea of alien space Pokemon always is, I'm more inclined to interpret Clefairy coming from the moon in an ethereal, magical, fairy way. While Clefairy has a relationship with the moon, the rumour is that it was once almost a star. A commonly tossed around factoid is that the Pokemon anime, and by association entire franchise, was at one time planned to star Clefairy instead of Pikachu. So the story goes, the decision was made at the last minute that Pikachu had a broader appeal for both boys and girls, not being pink, and would be more universally recognisable. There is plenty of circumstantial evidence to suggest Clefairy had a bigger role planned than it eventually received. The first manga adaptation of Pokemon, Pokemon Pocket Monsters, starred a rude comedy for Clefairy. Even within the original games, Clefairy is rare and exotic. It has one of the few overworld sprites based on its design. There is a great deal of speculation all over the internet that Gengar's design is a dark, ghostly reflection of Clefable. If the Clefairy family were intended as the Pikachu-esque star Pokemon, it makes sense there would be a twisted clone. With Pikachu we went on to see Mimikyu, and before that every generation has featured some new allusion to the yellow fella. Also like Pikachu, Clefairy received a pre-evolution in the second generation of Pokemon games. Clefer is a baby Clefairy, even more round and chubby and explicitly star-shaped. There's not much more to it than that. Like most baby Pokemon, Clefer feels like it was shoehorned in to be cute and sell toys. Not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Clefer certainly is cute. With, appropriately enough, a Moonstone, Clefairy evolves into Clefable. Clefable is very much in the, the same but bigger, school of Pokemon evolutions. It looks like a Clefairy, but it's a little taller and tougher, the wings are exaggerated, and it isn't quite as cute. Apparently, Clefable was a moderately big deal in the competitive scene. Normal type Pokemon have a pretty wide move pool, and Clefable could be an unpredictable Pokemon to throw out and bamboozle opponents. As usual, the mighty Summoning Salt on YouTube covers it in great deal on their video. As of Generation 6, however, Clefairy and family are no longer normal-type Pokémon. When the Fairy-type was introduced, it was inevitable that Clefairy would be converted. Clefable went from an unpredictable novelty on competitive Pokémon teams to an absolute must-have. The Fairies were introduced explicitly to defeat Dragons, which incidentally sounds like a plot from a high fantasy rather than a quirk of eSports meta-balancing. And Clefable was a powerhouse in the Dragon-slaying business. 
Jonathan Cromie, composer for this show, had this to say. The really interesting thing about them, I think, requires a bit of competitive poker nerdery. Clefable is one of the top singles competitive Pokémon in the main metagame. Despite being an early gen monster with predictable bobbin stats, it added some excellent abilities in Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, and then an excellent typing in X and Y to its obscene move pool. Clefable is an example of how a Pokémon can beat the power creep without doing something stupid like banging a daft haircut on it and calling it a mega Pokémon. It already had a daft haircut, mind. Andrew Rice also got in touch. Hello Luke Loves Pokemon. I'm going to talk about Clefairy. It's a it's a pink fluffy thing in it. Uh, it's a cute little one, isn't it? Not I mean I it's not as appreciated as as the other one. And then it evolves into a, a a less cute one, doesn't it? As is a, often the case with Pokemon and evolution and such, things just get worse. The world is just constantly getting worse and worse. And then we're gonna die. It isn't too hard to see Clefairy taking Pikachu's role in Ash's many adventures and the novelty of Metronome bringing out new and interesting moves each week could be even more exciting than Pikachu's electric displays. As it is, we live in a world where Pikachu is the face of Pokemon. We can but dream, for there are other worlds than these. Music for Luke Loves Pokemon was created by Jonathan Cromie. Artwork for the show is by Katie Groves. If you're interested and you enjoy the show, please do give us a 5-star rating and review on iTunes, and share this podcast with your Pokemon-loving friends. If you have anything to say about next week's Pokemon, Vulpix and Ninetales, please let me know all about it. I'm on Twitter and Facebook at LukeLovesPKMN, and you can email the show at LukeLovesPKMN at gmail.com. I love Clefairy, and remember, I love you too. <laughs>